I'm under the impression that some of you didn't like last week's show, but unlike most in the industry, Cyclocosm has a fantastic PR representative. Watch and learn. <laughs> Yes, there were two World Tour stage races last week. One of them is thoughtfully deconstructed on YouTube by yours truly. The other... Ah, why ruin it with analysis? Wouldn't you rather thumb through a slideshow full of cliches like Faithful Lieutenant and learn what products you should be buying instead? Not sure why exactly a rights holder would crave recognition as the J. Peterman catalog of cycling, but far be it for me to stand in their way. And no, I don't particularly care about how the race was worn. Rafa doesn't care about my shirt, I don't care about their title. Besides, who cares about stage racing? This Wednesday's Noca Recorsa was the official beginning of the classic season, won for the second consecutive year by Lotto in a sprint that Chris Bookman's made look easy. And trust me, on those cobblestones, it most certainly is not. Italy's GP Nobili also ended in a sprint this week, won by Trek Factory Racing's Giacomo Nizzolo. As you'll know if you watched the Perry Nice video, he's had some recent near misses, and a win this close to the weekend's Milan San Remo certainly bodes well. I mean, Cancellara is still going to be the guy, but having two cards to play at MSR certainly doesn't hurt. In fact, San Remo might be the season's most misunderstood classic. I go into some detail on this in the Recon Ride podcast, which I make with Dane Cash of Velo Human, and which you should definitely be listening to, but the physical and tactical challenge of San Remo is totally undersold. In fact, San Remo was, oh so many years ago, the very first event I produced to how the race was won on. Will I let Torreno's rights holders J. Peterman it this time around? No. No, I will not. Of course, San Remo is nowhere near as underappreciated as its female counterpart, La Primavera Rosa, which was last held a decade ago and remains off the calendar, though a reasonable strong production of the inaugural women's Strada Bianca should bring its revival into consideration. In fact, it's been a pretty strong start to the season across the board for women's racing. Drenta Oct got a tremendous amount of attention, even if Georgia Bronzini of Wiggle Honda's win was kind of lost in the shuffle. The UCI did great work recapping her teammate Yolene Dura's win at Ronda Vendrenta. The inner ring had some bones to pick with it last year as compared to InCycle's productions, but I mean seriously, go to YouTube, watch the Ronda Vendrenta recap, and then take the Pepsi challenge against any of InCycle's Jay Peterman offerings from Toreno. Maybe you can try and make the production value argument, but there's no question which I'd rather watch. Hitech's Kristen Vield, fresh off a scratch race world title on the track, returned to take the third race of the Drenta series, the Novalon Euro Cup. Judging from the refreshingly comprehensive report on Cycling Tips Ella, it seems like it was a pretty vild little event. Have I made that joke before? I feel like I must have. Anyway, I'm looking towards the inaugural Women's World Tour next season. What am I looking forward to from the men next season? Fewer TUEs. In all seriousness, the lasting impact of the CERC report isn't going to be the findings themselves. They were uselessly anonymous and for the most part, not news. I mean, even with TUEs, Jesus Manzano was telling us about cortisone abuse over 10 years ago. No, the important thing here is the UCI's full and total endorsement of the report. As when they granted Astana's license under the conditions of an audit at the end of last season, the UCI's interest here isn't dispensing retribution or showing the world they're really serious this time. The idea here is the rather boring concept of establishing a groundwork for future action, in this case documenting the sport's problems to set up a bevy of new anti-doping measures. And this plotting procedural approach is actually kind of nice, especially compared to the old UCI. Back in 2006, they arbitrarily declared a new code of ethics as part of what was then called the Pro Tour. Unsurprisingly, the riders revolted, threatened court cases the UCI was almost certainly going to lose, and spoiler alert, not much changed. But by creating this report, the UCI now gives themselves a reason to make new rules. Like they can say, we investigated, we found that EPO microdosing can easily evade the current testing window, and we'd like to pursue nighttime testing in certain specified cases. And sure, UCI President Brian Cookson could be much sharper with the public and the press. For example, we don't comment on charity riders would have been a sweet ice burn against you-know-who reappearing at the tour this summer. But as an administrator, the dude is doing all right. Now he just needs to charm Belgian authorities into taking a similar approach with the endless case of Dr. Mertens, which is no longer about ozone, but water and amino acids. Yeah, literally. And I think I know just the way. <laughs> I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that was The Week in Bike.
Thank you.